Okay, then let's start. Uh, hello to the TUC uh, working group meeting, uh, to the TUC meeting, sorry. <laughs> uh, today, uh, 16 of April, uh, we have uh, our usual agenda with updates from the service management working group. So let's uh, check uh, the action items from last week. So we have one action item to um, talk about the Go UA uh, issue. Um, I think we will do this later. Uh, it's anyway on our um, project board. So we discussed a little bit on this uh, last time, uh, but uh, Amelia and Chris were not dead. So we decided to talk again about this uh, this week, um, this topic this week. So let's do this after the update. So Marcello, if you if you are ready, we can uh, proceed with the update. Sure. So there is something quite quiet lately in the group. Uh, apart from the couple of uh, RFCs that we have to review that we sent out, is the Corifi one that you had in the up. Uh, in the actions <laughs> below as well that we uh, I I posted it in the in our channel uh, someone posted it in our channel asking for review and there's the bind services through I suppose the binding credentials through a file that you're working on as well so we have to review that um, um, then there hasn't been any news from service fabric or uh, volume services really and on the osv api side is quite silent as well we have to uh, deprecate the that slack space because there's nothing going on and it's in a free account we are going to move it to the cloud foundry one and then on the cloud service brokers, we finally made the move to from Terraform to OpenTOFU. So looking <laughs> at that space now and seeing what's going on. Um, so we are only supporting OpenTOFU from version one of the cloud service broker. Um, <laughs> That's basically what we have done so far in the last couple of months. We published a, a migration guide also for whoever has a broker, uh, custom broker packs for the cloud service broker, because there are a few things that need to be ensured in the broker packs to be able to actually use OpenTOFU seamlessly. So is the work to move to open tofu still in progress or mm. is it complete? So it's complete with some outstanding issues in the sense that uh, we in, in, cannot currently support the open tofu uh, registry uh, because open tofu is itself a drop-in replacement for Terraform, but there are some things that are built around the Terraform and in the Terraform ecosystem that are not completely the same in OpenTOFU. And basically the way that uh, Terraform publishes the releases is not the same as the way that OpenTOFU does. So because we do have a way of, a, a custom way of uh, downloading providers and we, ship that uh, with the broker, with the broker pack. So we, when you build a broker pack, that that's the specification of how to build service instances in the cloud for a certain service offering. When you build it, you pack all the providers already in inside. So we have to have a way of downloading that release and it's different the way both of them publish it. So it's not um, that's trivial to 
technology support. So we are going to raise the issue with OpenTOEFL and see what happens. And otherwise, we are waiting for the community to see if they actually want to use the OpenTOEFL registry, because if that's not our case for now. There's no reason to move to a different registry. There's no limitation for now in using the Terraform one. So. Is there any date that you're trying to get off Terraform by, or are you already at the point where you're not publishing with any new Terraform versions? We are not, we are not publishing. So the, we, are, we don't support Terraform anymore, basically. Okay. So uh, broker pack authors are the ones that, in the broker pack you specify which Terraform version you want to use. Mm -hmm. and But now you cannot specify it anymore. You have to specify open Terraform. There's no compatibility release where you can specify any of the two. So without the registry, is you there anyone still... that we expect to break or any users? Or use you can cases? still use the Terraform registry. Okay, okay. So unless you are using something that is only in the open job for one, it should be okay. Okay. But the goal is to move everything over to open tofu once you figure out a method if people want it yeah so i think it's still a work in progress in the registry side of things because the what the open tofu has done is uh, fork all the providers in the open tofu registry and there's nothing really in there. So you cannot really raise an issue with them or anything for now. So I don't really see the point. Well, now we have to see where it goes. <laughs> Is that the only thing uh, that you haven't integrated with, with Open yeah. Tofu? Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the uh, HashiCorp providers are all uh, also have a good license, right? So those can still be mm -hmm. used. They are compatible with OpenTOEFL. So this is only about moving to the OpenTOEFL binary. Yeah, for now, like they had said that they were not going to impose any restrictions to the providers or the registry, but that's yet to see. Are there any other questions? Is there anything we can help? Uh, I'm not, not sure. No, not really. Oh, there's uh, we have, I don't know if you, I, ha I haven't seen the, the updates on the PRs. We have uh, just requested an addition as, to the approvers in the cloud service broker area is just our engineering manager. Basically, he needs access for some things like being able to uh, update the release notes and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but this is more a uh, working group. Um, yeah. Person, yeah. If there, if you need something there, just ping me or someone okay. else. Okay, uh, then we can proceed with the agenda. Um, so we can jump to the reviewing our issues, PRs, RFCs. Um, Okay, the first one here is regarding the inactive users to be deleted. Um, this is now uh, open for two weeks. Um, so I basically heard something from Joe and uh, also from Nitin. Um, so I asked them just to open 
PRs, if they still want to stay uh, members, uh, contributors uh, after this is merged. So only Joe reacted uh, until yet. Uh, Ruben, I think you wanted to talk with Nitin uh, because he's doing some compliance. Uh, sorry, uh, mm -hmm. correct me. Um, yeah, he hasn't gotten back to me. But I think we can just go ahead, right? Like, and we can always yeah. um, make a PR later. Yeah. So re regarding um, Joe, we discussed longly uh, because he wasn't aware about what happened with the uh, Go UA repository and so that he didn't have any maintainer access to that one uh, after the move. Um, so there is, um, so at the end, uh, we proposed uh, uh, Joe to ap uh, apply for approval roles uh, uh, for that repository and to split uh, the UAA area so that we have an extra uh, working group area for the uh, Go UAA repository where Joe can be main uh, approver um, can have the approval role. And he agreed on that proposal. So we have now a PR which is proposing that. And I uh, just removed Joe from the uh, users here. Um, so he won't be removed from the, um, as contributor, uh, from our contributors here. Now. Only the other three users. Um, didn't react. Yeah, this is the current state, at least with this one. Do you want to discuss more on this? Or... Uh, I don't know if others have followed the confusion that happened there. I mean, I don't know if you want to discuss it any further, but I mean, um, I think last week we discussed that we might want to, um, I don't know, um, make sure that the next time we're moving a repo, right, from the community repo or something, that we at least go, I don't know, maybe uh, a year back, check who has been active to try to identify maintainers. It has yeah. been typically pretty hard with the community organization, at least in the past, because it was not clear who was maintainer because everybody was an admin. Um. <clears throat> But yeah, just something to be aware of, and like we could maybe consider adding an amendment to an RFC or something to specify guidelines, or we could also maybe not do that. I don't know. Maybe I don't know how many times this is gonna come up, right? Because I believe that the last things we want to move from the community are in flight. Yeah. Um. So. So at least I don't hear anything uh, from other uh, repository owners that they want to move. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm all for merging this now. Um, I know you said you reached out to him, Ruben. It seems a little contentious, <laughs> to say the least. Maybe mm -hmm. when we do it, we read. If you could reach out to him again and just be like, "By the way, we did it." Still happy to talk just to keep uh, things friendly. Uh, I think what yeah, I'm... No, that's Nitin, right? Like he's at working at Broadcom still. So that that's the one I was reaching out to. Oh, I thought you meant with Joe. No. I think we, we because we have the other PR, uh, right, that Joe made. Uh, and I think that's all now. Okay, show. okay, okay. Got it. Yeah, uh, yeah, our conversation with Joe is here. Um, so. Yes. Um, I think what I've learned about it is we can do something and then two years later, someone will show up and say, no one ever told me. I still uh, miss some approvals here. 
Sorry, I was too busy talking to Roof. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can um, proceed with the next one. So this is about move uh, from of the Bosch Prometheus uh, organization to the cloud foundry. The repository is belonging to Bosch Prometheus organization. So after the uh, discussion with Joe, we decided to uh, ask here the active uh, maintainers uh, about their approval. So that's why we put the comment here and uh, only if Odenas reacted until now. Um, yeah. This is the current state. Um, so we implemented a little bit from the plan to check with uh, active maintainers <laughs> before we just merge the PR. So now we add a warning to wait another week since we usually do things with two week intervals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's put a warning. Okay, uh, yeah, let's uh... So we had um, a suggestion to improve the uh, description we have in that inactive uh, user PRs, and I uh, I have this suggestion here. Um, yeah, if you are fine with that, we can go with this. Or last time we said that we want to have uh, at least a link to the um, promotion rules. Rolls, um, so um, that's why I edit it here. Thanks for doing this. Let's see whether this helps. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Thanks. And then we have the one about uh, splitting the UA area. Um, so here uh, the proposal is that all UA approvals are also approvals in the Go UA repository, and Joe is also approval. Um, yeah. Yes. See you. See your working group. So it this was escalated on QC level. That's why I decided to bring this up. But usually this is a working group matter. Yeah. Um, so we have already approval from uh, Marcus. Still waiting on bail. Yeah. And you're the execution lead of the working group, so you can. <laughs> so, because Marcus asked for someone uh, from VMware to also approve, uh, and in some way I saw. Um, um, but I think, Ruben, if you are yeah, here, but it should mm -hmm. be enough. Okay.
Great. So we have now all the issues. Uh, we can go on the RFCs. Um, is, is there something about the CV numbering authority? Any updates? Uh, no, no updates on that. Um, I know that's lingering quite a bit, uh, although I understand it's not exactly urgent. Um, I'll connect with Paul on this and we'll, we'll get back to you shortly. Okay, then I'll leave it uh, on the block. State. Uh, and now the generic burnout features RFC. So uh, we decided to start the final comment comments period uh, here. Um, I didn't see any discussions after that on the RFC. Uh, I see also Dominic and Maximilian in the call. Um, do you want to add something here? Yeah, basically the only thing that's still open is this uh, CF API semantics, but we decided that this is not in scope to be defined as part of the RFC and we just say that it should be in line with whatever we have without specifying it further. But besides that, I think everything is addressed. Yeah. And you also added uh, here the lines to uh, little bonus bit to implement. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So rough orientation in which direction we uh, want to go. The assumption being that the implementers of the cloud controller know their own API best and can therefore judge how it should look and behave. Yeah, um, that's fine with me. I'm excited to see this in, see the first PRs come in for this. Mm -hmm. The RFC was the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> so you just need to add, uh, ask chat GPT to implement that. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's great. It's uh, a check whether an RFC is written well or not. <laughs> uh, Stefan, uh... ah, Stefan is... So, okay, okay, we have now everyone. So, um, great, uh, we can match this and I'll add an action item so that I don't forget to generate. Okay, um, so the other one uh, regarding uh, introducing cloud native build packs um, life cycle to the runtime. So there are still open discussions. Um, yeah, I think we have to wait here until the discussions are resolved. At the moment, I don't think that we can do something uh, here. It's still uh, in progress. Doesn't seem to be blocked or something. And uh, we have in progress the RFC regarding an alternative for way to provide uh, the service binding information to applications. Um, most of the uh, most of the discussions are actually already resolved. Only I don't know how we should proceed with the um, options here, which the RFC proposes uh, regarding um, uh, how the, uh, to organize the files on uh, in the application container. So uh, in the RFC, um, I put two 
options uh, which are possible. One which uh, just provides a file uh, with the content of, uh, of BCAP services and the other one which goes more to the direction of uh, what is uh, direction the to the direction of Kubernetes specification regarding service bindings. Yeah, there are some discussions. Uh, people, people, I think, like more the second option. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that we probably do not want to merge this while there's still still two options, right? We want to pick something and have yes. that be the RFC. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm bringing this. I don't know how we should uh, decide on the options. Um, maybe at the, some point uh, when in the TUC we can um, go over the discussions, and you can make your mind which one you like more. I don't know. Um, Any suggestions? We could also maybe start a thread or like a common thread there and then just vote or something, have the TOC members vote mm -hmm. on which option to go with. I don't know if that makes sense. It's yeah. the process. Okay, um, so I will leave this open for another week and then yeah, I can start something uh, a voting yeah, will be uh, I like I like it. yeah. Um, yeah I wouldn't wait like that you could start probably this week, right? the voting so that we at least have some feedback. So it's in like a more final form, like next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can start also this week. I thought maybe leaving another week to people to put their feedback. Um, but yeah, maybe. But I mean, like after that, like that update is made, we still need to wait for the conversations to, I don't know, settle down. And then we can start the final comment period, right? So mm -hmm. there's still plenty of time to comment, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Even better. Uh, not for having to wait. <laughs> okay. And there is a new RFC. Um, yeah. Dominic, you are in the call. You can maybe <laughs> say some words. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. I'd say it's the like the option to have another way of handling CFSSH um, by going through a tunnel um, in a WebSocket connection. The benefit would be that it, it we could reuse the same port as we have for HTTP traffic. And we would be able to close the uh, the port two 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 that we currently have. Um, the main reason for that is we have lots of customers who do um, port scans for security reasons, and they they keep coming uh, and complaining about that port and why why it's uh, needed. And we have one customer who wants the port closed because they don't want to use CFSSH; they don't need it. And we have another customer who want it. And they are running on the same environment. So we can't, we have no choice. We have to leave it open basically. And this would um, at least stop this kind of discussion because the port would no longer have to be open for this, uh, uh, for this kind of workload. The idea is to have it like orthogonal to what we have now. So nobody needs to change anything if they don't want to use it. You can also still um, use old clients like um, old uh, CFCLI that doesn't support it. And uh, you could also run both in parallel and um, have like a fallback um, situation where you first try the WebSocket and if it fails, you could still 
tried the 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 regular port um so it would uh, basically not touch the existing implementation but just add to it as an opt-in yep i think that's it but there would be a way to opt out of the old configuration as well to turn it off yes right. so you get all kinds of permutations <laughs> So you can also run no SSH at all, also possible. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think we need those permutations, yeah. <laughs> can you talk yeah. more about the limitations that, I forget who brought it up. If you go to the discussion, maybe Max brought it up. Yeah, so I was basically pointing out that, so previously you could just use uh, SSH to directly talk with, with the CF platform. And you could use tools like SCP because the CF CLI itself doesn't provide a way to copy files over SSH. And um, if we now build this into the CF SSH command and the CF SSH command is the only thing that can understand our specific WebSocket implementation, <clears throat> for me, it would be kind of a small step back because we move away from standard tooling and we no longer allow people to just use whatever they have installed anyways to connect. But yeah, I just see that Dominic already provided an update. Yeah, yeah. it would just be interesting. I would just be interested in exploring um, options to remain compatible with OpenSSH and like just making it possible to connect without having the CF CLI installed. Yeah, I'm curious how many people use normal SSH. Since I've never or I never have like for an app because CFSSH exists, but I didn't think about the SCP option that makes more sense if we don't have a CFSCP. And that's the only way to get files. I could imagine people do that. Yeah, I think if we extend the CFCLI to have like all the powers of that you would get with the normal tools, it would also be fine. Um the main the main uh, scenario I was thinking of is is restricted environments where you can install can install the CFC life for whatever reason, or you are on a remote machine where you don't have the tooling that you usually have, or whatever. I don't know. You can come up with some scenarios, but I agree that it's not the main scenario. <clears throat> what about the TCP dump uh, stuff? But like I, I know at least for the Bosch CLI that was implemented using the Bosch SSH and their the hood, uh, but that's not the case for the uh, CF equivalent of it, right? That's using an yes. agent. Yeah, it's a different uh, path, if you will. Yeah. The Bosch SSH is, is always uh, non-public. There's no public mm -hmm. endpoint for it. So yeah. I like it. Yeah. It's a different scenario. So the main reason why we couldn't do this TCP dump over CFSSH is because CFSSH doesn't give you root in the container, whereas Bosch SSH ends up with a pseudo user, which can then, yeah, do that. I see. I see. I see. Do we think, so I'm definitely worried about breaking people. Or like, I like the idea of getting rid of the port. That to me sounds great, but I am worried about breaking people and things not being backwards compatible, always a fear. If if we go forward and we decide we're going to have both existing, but maybe the new one doesn't support normal SSH or SCP, we could have that for a while and determine if anyone comes to us, right? And say, oh, this is bro, you've broken all my workflows and yeah. then fix in the future since you still have both or, you know, um, is like is that something that we could like go along a path and like uh, improve it later? Does that make sense? It still works the regular open SSH. You just need a proxy in between that does the WebSocket mm. stuff. And unfortunately, the like the the go to command line tools that you usually have like curl doesn't support it out of the box. So you would have to somehow get either some plugin that we provide that makes it for you or uh, write it, uh, write your own 
Uh, it's like 10 lines of code is very simple, but it's just not part of the usual tool chain. Just unfortunate. It actually does exist in curl, like in the code base, but it's not exposed in the curl CLI tool. So the CLI doesn't understand uh, the WS uh, protocol. So one other question that comes to mind or other option would be whether there's um, a different tunneling protocol that we could still plug in, but given that we want to have HTTP as the underlying protocol, I, I assume there's nothing really that we could use. Yeah, even then you would have to use a proxy for the SSH or the regular one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. Again, I'm not against this in general. It's just something that mm. came to mind. Okay. Hey. Good discussion. So I think it continues on the RFC. Um, okay, put this in progress and regarding issues we don't have uh, any new issues so all done on the prs rfcs issue side so is there any other business i have a question sorry i meant to add it um there's a toc update from behan and then panel discussion as part of cf day it was originally going to be moderated by Eric Malm, who has tragically left our community and left a gaping hole in my heart. Um, and so we're, I know either Chris or Ram, I think you were thinking about being moderator. Is that true? That is true. Or we might have um, another option. OK. I but guess I was curious <laughs> what was going on with that. And um, we are actively working on it. and. Um, we have asked someone. I'm not quite sure if we can get or not, but we'll, but yeah, I'll let you know next week about that. Okay, great. Yeah, because I just yeah. want to make sure we work together to decide whoever's going to be there. What we want to talk about. What? Yep. Next question. <laughs> that makes um, sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no yeah. surprise questions. This is not a real interview. <laughs> um, I know no Chris, surprise Chris questions, never... but you might have a surprise moderator. So. <laughs> 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 But my understanding is that I don't need any slides, uh, or do I need? Uh... No, no slides, Behan. I think we can just, if you wanted to give a formal TOC update of sorts, then you might need slides, in my opinion. But if if we just want to maintain a conversational panel, um, I don't think we need slides. Yeah, I, I, I think it will be more interesting in a conversational. Um... Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> but then yeah. you can't use Bobcats. <laughs> okay. Well, let us know uh, when you figure that out, Chris. And um, thanks. We will. Uh, next week, we'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything else? We just got a PR from Nathan. <laughs> Yeah, from who? Uh, Nitin. Ah, okay. Yeah, Nitin. Yeah. I mean, should I? We work? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, well, um, it is. That, that's what we asked, right? Yes, uh, so I ask explicitly in the services. So it's really fast. I like when things get uh, going so smoothly, fast. <laughs> um, We're going for a speed record here. 
Uh, it's yeah. like really last minute in entry <laughs> record on okay wow. no, I have... <laughs> what's Wait. the uh this is good for our uh metrics our community <laughs> metrics <laughs> I mean, this is great like ah. <laughs> i mean this will take the average uh time to merge down or time <laughs> to approval <laughs> should have yeah. more of these do we have uh, LFX board for the TOC, <laughs> Chris? <laughs> With best practices and so on? <laughs> KPIs? <laughs> KPIs, yeah. yeah. You just have to be careful. They don't cross the line and start getting you know, the t shirt PRs, you know, <laughs> just to pad your numbers. <laughs> you know, oh, oh, we merged the PR before the checks were green. That will give a not so good light on the <laughs> KPIs. <laughs> it's a frowny face. Frowny face. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Okay, then we are done. Uh, if there is nothing else, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Also, I'll see you next week. Exactly. Yeah. Take care. Bye, everyone. Bye.